you. It's very good to see you. Good to see you too, Jimmy. You've been on the road doing uh, stand-up comedy, I know. Yes. The name of your tour is what? Uh, middle-aged boy. Middle-aged boy. Yes. You are the middle-aged boy. Do you think of yourself that way? I do a little bit. Uh -huh. I, I'm still like uh, not married. I don't have children. Uh, and yet I'm an adult. I'm not, I seemingly am not wearing socks right now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that seems to be a sign Like of... boys have been known to do. Yeah, exactly. And this is always interesting to me when you leave the United States mm -hmm. to do stand-up. Where did you go? You went where? Uh, I was recently, I was uh, in New Zealand and Australia, and I was in London as well doing shows. Other English-speaking countries. Yes. Do they, are they, do they enjoy your work, or are they receptive to your jokes? They tolerate it. They uh, did? Yeah. yeah, they were fine with it. They were, they were great. Uh, the shows, uh, I went to Australia and New Zealand uh, with my girlfriend, and I, uh, I was doing shows in London, and I was there on my own, or I thought I was going to be on my own, but I ended up there. Uh, my parents ended up in London at the same time. Was that a coincidence or one of those parent coincidences? It was a parent coincidence. Uh -huh. yeah, they were right. like, oh my god, here we are in London. <laughs> and I was like, cool, cool, middle-aged boy. <laughs> Did your, your girlfriend was there too? No, she was not in, she was oh, not in London. So that's I just got, worse. Yeah. yeah, I just got some uh, qualities. I mean, it was, it was great, but it's like, I don't know, it, like when you're with your parents, like I was, you know, they were staying in a separate hotel but every day I'd like go to a museum with them, but I just immediately reverted back to be like, Dad, that's not where I want to go to lunch today. <laughs> <laughs> so they were calling the shots. Yeah, yeah. it was sort of like, there's you only were, so many places that your dad will eat lunch. You with them the whole time? It, just during the day, every day around like one to four, I would spend with them. I see. And then I'd be like, Mom, this museum is so boring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was it was it was actually really fun. They came to a couple shows. They it was did really fun. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, did you great. get to be by like uh, you? Oh, so you spent every day from one to four, and the rest of the time you had a the lot. rest of the time I wandered the rainy streets of London, mm -hmm. nude. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad you were able to get, they probably sent you back almost yeah, immediately. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Speaking of nude and, and such, yes. your show Big Mouth, which, yeah. by the way, if, if you haven't seen Big Mouth, this is one of the, first of all, funniest, but also filthiest shows. Maybe, I have to believe, I know you got nominated for an Emmy. Yeah. The dirtiest show ever to get nominated for an Emmy. Yeah. Yes? Yes. I think we got nominated for a number of AVNs as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it is, it's very, very dirty and very sort of heartfelt and comes also very emotional. Uh, it's based on me and my friend Andrew Goldberg growing up uh, and when we were going through puberty. And then it's really about all kids adolescents and their hormone monsters and shame wizards and depression kitties, but it's it's dirty. Which are like the voices in your head at that yes, age. Yes, exactly, basically. exactly. Yeah. And who say ho the horrible things that we think of. Yeah, well, like Andrew, the, when he pitched me, he's like, I think Nick should have like a, Andrew should have like a hormone monster. And I immediately was just like, touch yourself, Andrew. <laughs> uh, and, that, and that became... Uh, and had you said that to an Andrew before? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cuomo. When, uh, <laughs> when you are writing the show, I assume you write the show, yes? I do. Yes, yeah. you, when you're writing the show. With a group of very talented writers. Okay, are yes. they? And, but it must be, I mean, I can only imagine, and again, if people haven't seen the show, they don't really know what, <laughs> but I cannot, I mean, it, nothing must be off limits. Or does, I mean, is there ever a time where somebody says something, you go, oh, no, Ooh. no. No, you know, we have to, like, you know, the show is really about me and Andrew, but it's really about everyone going through puberty and adolescence, so it's, you really have to get specific about your life experience to share, and, and really we have to sort of lead the way, and, and my character, Nick, in the show is a very late bloomer like I was. Like, I didn't hit puberty, I didn't have pubes until, like, I was, like, 15 years old, and uh, mm -hmm. that's not a joke. <laughs> uh, and... Um, so in the show, and so he hasn't had puberty, so he's still got like a boy penis, and he's very insecure about his like little penis. So in the writer's room, there's a lot of talk about like, well, what's a good, like, let's talk about Nick's little <laughs> you know, or like, what's happening with Nick's little penis this episode? And I'm just like, guys, uh, this is. <laughs> I'm, I'm Nick. I'm here, and I'm Nick. And... You, and yet, even though the show is quite filthy, you've attracted a, a very high level of, of guest stars. Yes. 
Who's been on the show? Uh, I know uh, Kristen Wiig's been on the Kristen show. Kristen Wiig plays Jesse's uh -huh. vagina. Uh -huh. uh, Wanda Sykes played the ghost of Harriet Tubman. Uh, <laughs> Martin Short plays a uh, Canadian uh, dentist who's struggling with sexuality. Uh, and then regular cast members, Jenny Slate, Jason Manzoukas, Jordan Peele, Maya Rudolph, Fred Armisen, Jesse Klein. It's like a powerhouse It's, it's great. Group. Yeah. So all great, very funny people. Yeah. When you ask people to be on the show, do they know what they're getting into? Like, are there people that you've said, hey, maybe, you know, or they've said, no, I'm not doing that? You know, it's like one of those shows where I think everyone's like, oh, my kid loves your show, or something like that. So Tandy Newton plays, um, uh, plays uh, Missy's Hormone Monstrous. David Thewlis, who's like a very fine actor, uh, <laughs> is, is the shame wizard. People don't always know, but then we, we let them know and then... Some... Have you asked people who, who have said, no, I'm not gonna do that? Uh, we've had some people. The one that, that, we've, that I asked that I really always wanted to be on the show very much was, was Howard Stern. Uh, and I wrote him a letter uh, that about how much I want him to be a, the, a hormone monster mm -hmm. on the show because, like, I mean, who's more of a hormone monster than Howard Stern? Yeah. And so I wrote him a letter, uh, to, and his his agent, they responded very politely that he <laughs> did not want to. But you know, as a regular listener to Howard Stern, yeah. that that never works. He doesn't want to write do, a letter. Yeah. It doesn't, he, no, it doesn't matter. He doesn't want to do fact, anything. All that's going to happen is he's going to make fun of your letter and yes. probably read it aloud. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it was worth a shot. Was it like one of those letters like, hey, you know, you're the reason I started talking about how small my penis was? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he really did. Howard Stern paved the way he for did. small penis men. <laughs> I to know. talk, and just to be clear, America, <laughs> my penis is totally out. Well, I'm gonna, <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take a look at it, yeah, and we'll, we'll take we'll a break. We'll Nick Kroll is here, his movie is called yeah. Olympic Dreams, we'll be right back. <laughs> if you like that video, click subscribe, and we'll be together until one of us dies.